Hello. Welcome to this online CPD presentation on steel, the safe solution. My name is Dr. Roger Pope, and I'm a technical consultant with the British Constructional Steelwork Association. Over the next 60 minutes, I'm going to cover steel and the safety implications of steel on site. Steel, the safe solution. You can see there on the screen the contents that we're going to cover. I will proceed. You may be familiar with the roles that various parties fill in terms of being clients, designers, trade contractors. In terms of steelwork, we have frame designers, connections designers, and steelwork contractors. We're particularly concerned with the interface between designers and steelwork contractors. For instance, in the picture, how can we make sure that this splice fits and it meets the design requirements? When designing for erection, we want to have a practice that is as safe as is reasonably practicable. What should be the benchmark for safety? What steps should designers and steelwork contractors take? How does this support, for, support the responsibilities of the client, the CDM coordinator and principal contractor? For instance, is this man as safe as you would want to be in that circumstance? He's a harness, but how would he be rescued if he fell? The safe choice. What lies behind the safe choice decision? Designers are obliged to consider whether their schemes can be safely built. The choice of building materials has a major influence on what is achievable. When undertaking structural design, steel construction can be considered to be the most safe solution. And we shall now consider why steel construction is inherently safer because of its embedded safety features. Before erection, steel work is pre-engineered in a way that makes pre-planning of operations easier and more certain. A virtual reality model of the steel frame can be built in three dimensions in the computer, thus facilitating detailed planning of the erection procedure. And that can be seen in the two photographs from Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Steelwork is prefabricated off-site, which makes it accurate and less liable to errors that would generate site hazards. And steelwork is standardised in a way that leads to repetition of site tasks and hence greater certainty of safe practice. During erection, Steelwork provides a frame solution that can be self-stable with immediate availability of the full strength of the material. Safe access to working positions can immediately be gained using already erected parts of the steel structure. And where necessary, steelwork can be trial erected to establish the best method of subsequent safe erection on site. And the photograph shows the trial erection of the Terminal 5 building, where 160 issues were resolved not just in terms of the trial erection of the steelwork, but also of the glazed facade. Steelwork also requires very few persons on site. In terms of steel solution after erection, steelwork is easily modified if necessary during maintenance or refurbishment and is readily demountable should demolition be, be necessary. Good practice. The fundamentals of good practice in terms of safety should be defined by industry experience and not by lawyers. And this depends on competence of the people concerned and on having safety as an embedded feature, both in terms of the product and in terms of the culture of the employees employed to erect it. Planning a good practice needs to be based on credible scenarios drawn from past experience. The BCSA's Health and Safety Committee is the forum for exchange of such experiences. And general guidance depends on citing such an authority in a goal-setting regulatory framework such as we have. BCSA has published a set of yellow books of best practice that capture this information. These cover erection of low white rise buildings, multi-storey buildings, steel bridges, steel erection in windy conditions, metal decking and stud welding, the installation of deep decking, task specific method statements, management of site lifting operations, and guide for employees on site. These are built around default solutions. And why are default solutions useful? It's because they aid safety in the following ways. They avoid the tendency to teach one's grandmother to suck eggs, they are built on the idea that practice makes perfect, and by defining the usual practice, they aid the identification of what is unusual. We shall now see what the common default solutions are. The default solution for single-storey construction is to start by erecting a braced bay to provide stability. Using a mobile telescopic crane that can, the, can, can traverse the site, and gaining access to working positions using mobile elevating work platforms, the ubiquitous MUP or cherry picker. 
The default solution for multi-storey construction is to use the stair core to provide stability. Lift and place the steelwork with a tower crane and gain access from metal decking or precast planks already placed on the floor below. When installing metal decking or precast planks, you have to ensure that the steel frame is aligned and stable to receive decking or planks and to integrate the sequence of installation with the progress of the steelwork erection and provide nets and edge protection for general protection of the, of the employees and others. You can see in the picture edge protection already installed on a beam before it's lifted into place. Design considerations. There are three key safety objectives that underpin the erection methodology. Stability, craneage and access. How can stability of the part erected structure be maintained? What craneage is needed for lifting and placing the steelwork? How can safe access to and at working positions be arranged? The designer has obligations concerning these three safety objectives. The designer must consider the stability of the part erected structure, as errors in ensuring that the steelwork contractor has a clear understanding of the designer's stability concept will generally rebound on the designer. In terms of craneage, whilst the designer would not ultimately select the crane, clear assumptions on lifting capabilities should underlie the choices made in the scheme design, for instance about splice positions and hence piece weights. In terms of access, often the designer would have no more than a general awareness about access provision, enough to confirm that the general assumptions in the default solutions are valid. We see in the picture a question that is raised by that structure in terms of how the stability is maintained. The two structures depend on each other and there's a valley line of columns that doesn't have lateral bracing. Here we see in the next picture a question about where the crane needs to be placed. In this, pla in this case they have chosen the atrium. And you can also see a cherry picker working in the atrium of this structure. Then in terms of access, you can see in these two pictures access by cherry picker but on the other hand it requires the man to get out of the cherry picker and onto the steelwork with suitable harnesses etc. In the right hand picture you can see two baskets hung from the beams at high level for access and also a man basket in the second crane, the yellow crane on the left. Hazard, risk and competence. It's a common misconception but an unfounded view that steel erection is risky. Statistics show that neither steel erection nor falls from steel are near the top of the worst offences list. Certainly, steel erection is hazardous, but not risky. With proper management by a competent steelwork contractor, the risks can be removed or controlled. Hence, the keys to eliminating, avoiding or reducing risk are identifying the hazards and selecting a competent contractor. In terms of identifying the hazards, these arise from three of steel construction's inherent characteristics. Large, heavy components must be lifted and placed into position, such as is seen in the photograph. The structure can be unstable in the part erected condition, which will probably be true of that truss without lateral restraints before the cranes are removed, and each project is different. Selecting a competent steelwork contractor. To ensure that these hazards are safely dealt with, the risk assessment at design stage should insist that a competent steelwork contractor is chosen. To assist the choice, the BCSA assesses and classifies all its steelwork contractor members against two criteria. For what categories of work, for instance high-rise buildings, does the contractor have a proven track record? And secondly, what is the recommended maximum size of contract that can be safely resourced and managed by the contractor? This maximum is based on a typical contract completed within one year. Longer term contracts could be proportionately larger. What are the BCSA's categories of steelwork? For buildings, there are several, from heavy industrial plate work through to lighter fabrications. For instance, in the case of high-rise buildings, those up to four storeys are different from those from 15 to 5 to 15 storeys. And the 15 storey limit is chosen to align with the risk assessment categories given in the approved document similarly for the size of grandstands in category N. Similarly for bridges, there are several more categories from footbridges and sign gantries through to ancillary structures in steel associated with bridges, footbridges or sign gantries, such as grillages or purpose-made temporary works. 
So how can specifiers search for a suitable steelwork contractor? You can use the directories on the BCSA website and on that site you'll find a member database app that aids that search. Scope of competence. The categories of work used by the BCSA described before are general and the precise scope of work demanded by each project will differ. Thus, the first priority for competent contractors is to ensure that the scope of work can be safely undertaken with the resources of know-how, manpower, equipment and finance at their disposal. For this purpose, the BCSA has prepared checklists of activities that steelwork contractors should be competent to undertake. These include all activities that are commonly included in trade packages for steelwork, but may not necessarily be seen as steelwork, such as drilling concrete, for and installing chemical or expanding anchors as foundation bolts. The checklists of activities are available at that web link and they consist of normal activities that steelwork contractors should be competent to undertake with their own personnel and special activities they should be able to manage using specialist subcontractors as necessary. So for instance we see in the picture operating of access platforms clearly a normal scope of work. Whereas in these pictures, we see the requirement for the lateral, mo lateral movement of a large load and also for large-scale site assembly. These are in the special scope of work. The BCSA undertakes assessments of its members and it's important for specifiers to realise this because it includes reviews of their health and safety management practices. These assessments conform to the requirements of the safety schemes in procurement and construction. It is made clear in these assessments that it is the steelwork contractor's duty to ensure that the company only undertakes work that is within its scope of competence using the checklists I've given you before as benchmarks. This would include making clear to others if the company's scope of competence is more limited than that listed in the checklist of activities. So having checked what is required at tender stage in the project, the steelwork contractor should warn designers if they're unable to undertake any of the normal activities. But designers should check beforehand whether a steelwork contractor is willing to undertake the management of the special activities. Method statement development. Method statements are the basis of safe site practice. As is made clear in the yellow books, the single most important step that contributes towards safe practice is to ensure that competent persons are mobilized to undertake the task in hand. This step depends on having a clear understanding of what is involved in the task in hand, how is the task to be undertaken, who is to undertake the task, are they trained and competent and briefed about the specific task. For each task there needs to be a defined method statement that includes an associated risk assessment. There are three stages in the development of the erection method statement for the primary task of steel erection. Stage one is pre-tender. Even before a competent steelwork contractor can be selected, Design decisions must be made that affect what erection methods can or must be used. These may emerge in the development of the pretender health and safety plan or in the steelwork design process itself that depends on an assumed sequence of erection. Stage 2 is around tender for the steelwork contract. During frame design and during or soon after the tendering period, there are further items that can be considered in developing the design basis outline method of erection. We shall see what these are later. Stage 3 is during the contract, as preparations are made for commencement on site. The steelwork contractor will develop the full erection method statement as part of the construction health and safety plan. Stage 1. Items to be considered by designer and principal contractor relating to site conditions suitable for safe erection. Access to the site and within the site. Limitations on dimensions or weights of components that can be delivered onto the site. Soil conditions affecting the safe operation of plant. Provision and maintenance of hard standing for cranes and access equipment. Details of underground services, overhead cables or site obstructions. Special environmental and climatic conditions on and around the site. Particulars of adjacent structures affecting or affected by the works. Possible settlement of supports to the structure during erection. 
Availability of site services and pre-arranged procedures for cooperating with other contractors. Value of construction and storage loads allowed on the steelwork. Concrete placement during co composite construction. Stage 2. Items to be considered in dialogue between frame and connection designers and the steelwork contractor. The position and types of site joints. The maximum piece size, weight and location. The sequence of erection. The stability concept for the part erected structure, including any requirements for temporary bracing or propping. Propping or other actions necessary to facilitate subsequent concreting of composite structures. Conditions for removal of temporary bracing or propping, or any subsequent requirement for de-stressing of permanent bracing. Features which will create a hazard during construction. Timing and method of grouting foundation connections. Camber and presets required, including values to be checked at fabrication stage. Use of profiled steel sheeting to ensure stability. Use of profiled steel sheeting to provide lateral restraint to members. Possible method of providing safe working positions. Stage 3. Items to be finalised in the erection method statement by the steelwork contractor. Experience from any trial erection undertaken. The restraints necessary to ensure stability prior to welding and to prevent local movement of the joint. The lifting device is necessary. The necessity to mark weights and or centres of gravity on large or irregularly shaped pieces. The relationship between the weights to be lifted and the radius of operation where the cranes are to be used. The identification of sway forces, particularly those due to the forecast wind conditions on site during erection, and the exact method of maintaining adequate sway resistance. Exact methods of coping with any safety hazards. Exact methods of providing safe access to positions of work and safe working positions. Safe site handover. The steelwork contractor has a responsibility to ensure that site conditions are safe for the persons he is mobilising to undertake work on site. The provision of safe site conditions is the responsibility of the principal contractor. BCSA has prepared a safe site handover certificate that establishes the criteria for safe site conditions to be confirmed by the principal contractor and accepted by the steelwork contractor. The SSHC may be viewed at the web link chosen. On which site would you want to be erecting? The middle one looks much better than the other two, which are clearly unsafe. Stability. Of the three key issues, stability, cranage and access, designers must chiefly be concerned with ensuring stability, as only they have full knowledge of the concepts upon which the design is based. The concern is for stability during all stages of erection, of the assembled structure in its final condition, of assembled portions in the part erected condition, of individual components during lifting and after placing in position, and hence for specifying the brief for any temporary works necessary necessitated by the scheme design. Stability in the final condition. Will stability be by means of permanent bracing or sway frames? Or will it depend on other construction elements such as concrete shear walls? How will the load path between steelwork and concrete supports be engineered? Where will the permanent bracing be located? Will metal decking etc. be used as diaphragms? And how are the load paths between components engineered? Look at the picture. Where are the base braced bays? Stability in the part erected condition. How will potential frame instability be overcome? How will the construction sequence dictate when load paths can be established? How are valley beams to be loaded when one side might be loaded before the other? What construction loads will be permitted? Look at the picture. When will this pin make the structure a mechanism? Stability of individual members. Are any members susceptible to instability when being lifted and placed? How will single columns be stabilised when in the flagpole condition? Are the column bases pinned or able to take a moment? What is the condition of the column foundations during erection? How could the need for lateral restraint be engineered? 
Can the beam end connections provide lateral or sway resistance? What restrictions might there be on rigging arrangements during lifting, e.g. for attachment of guys to members? What different rigging arrangements are required for precast concrete units? Look at the picture. How are those beams stabilised during erection? And finally, the necessity for temporary works. Does the scheme necessitate any bracing or propping? What forces and moments will develop in the temporary members? How will forces and tension members be developed? How will members be secured during site welding? Are there restrictions on how the temporary members might be connected? Look at the picture. When can the temporary supports be removed? Dialogue. How does dialogue underpin the safe practice? While some of the questions raised above can be resolved by the frame designer alone, others may require a dialogue with the connection designer and or the steelwork contractor undertaking the erection. On the other hand, while steelwork contractors are responsible for designing the actual temporary works to be used, as they must match their chosen erection methods, they need a clear brief specified by the steelwork designer. Similarly, often the steelwork contractor will undertake the design of connections, and there can be an interaction between the selection of connection types and the need for temporary bracing or the sequence of erection. For instance, a fin plate will be less robust in the part erected condition than a welded full depth end plate. Similarly, the choice of a column spliced location, the design of the foundation itself and the column base connection could influence whether the column required stabilizing by temporary guys when first erected. Connections. In general, it is likely that the steelwork contractor would prefer to use standard details from the green books published by SCI BCSA, and the designer should be safe in the assumption that a competent contractor would be fully familiar with how to fix such connection types and their implications on connection stability. The corollary of the design default assumption above is that any special connection types should be given particular attention in terms of their implications for safe erection. For example, as noted above, pin connections can give rise to a mechanism in the part erected structure. This would need to be noted as a feature which could create a hazard during construction by whoever made the decision to select that connection type. How can this dialogue be promoted? Just as with all aspects of realising the designer's scheme in terms of practical details, the secret is to promote a dialogue about such issues between designer and contractor, and this need for dialogue extends to several factors that contribute to developing a safe erection method. There are many competent steelwork contractors, and on behalf of the client and themselves, Designers should check that the principal contractor is taking steps to select one. The marketplace also provides a wide choice of equipment for the contractor in terms of cranage and access. In the picture we can see the wide choice in the sense that there's a tower crane and a telescopic crane and a large reach cherry picker reaching to the sixth floor. How can this dialogue be promoted? What is in relatively short supply is good technical understanding of the implications of structural behaviour on erection methods, and it is this knowledge that the designer provides through the design basis outline method of erection and the subsequent dialogue with the chosen contractor. For instance, in the picture, how can we develop the best method to avoid disrupting the airport? Erection considerations. We're now going to go through a series of photographs to prompt you to think about how you will go about answering the questions concerning these various aspects essential to deciding an erection method. Site access. Which roads need to be closed during erection of this building? Crane position. Do the operational radii of the cranes overlap? And if so, where is the heaviest piece in relationship to those radii? It may be that the requirement to pick up the piece from the delivery area is the maximum radius required. Interaction with other trades. When to access the plunge columns. If it's needed to get into the foundation area to erect beams onto plunged columns, these can interact a lot with a lot of other trades. Delivery and storage. How can the trailer be offloaded at site? City centre sites, this can be quite difficult. Piece sizes. Is this column shaft the heaviest piece? 
If so, at what radius does it need to be lifted? Sequence. Will cantilage be needed when tensioning the structure? Stability in temporary works. Will the structure overstress itself? Pyramidal structures go into tension around their girth. Lifting and craneage. Will a contract lift be needed? Can the crane be placed on the pitch? Access. Will the structure support the cherry pickers necessary for erection at later stages of the contract? Special hazards. Who provides the safety boat? Further advice. Free advice is available from every steel construction site that one passes or sees in photographs, such as those illustrated in this presentation. In this way, lessons can be learned from the experience of others. Contacting the steelwork contractors involved can also be a mine of advice, and the contact details for BCSA members can be found on the BCSA's website. Also available, there are downloaded documents about best practice, tips for safer steel erection, and a copy of the BCSA's Safe Site Handover Certificate, as referred to earlier. The SCI website gives further information, including publication P162, giving advice to designers in steel under the CDM regulations. Finally, the BSI publishes BS5531, the Code of Practice for Safety in Erecting Structural Frames. Conclusions. Steel really is the safe solution. There's a lot of good lifting and access plant available. BCSA members provide a wide choice of competent contractors. These contractors have had their safety practice assessed under the SSIP. And don't forget to promote a dialogue about the best erection method. And also don't forget Steel's embedded safety features. It's pre-engineered and can be built in virtual reality. It's prefabricated, removing hazards and activities from site. It's standardised for repetition as practice makes perfect. It's self-stable with immediate availability of full strength and safer access over erected parts. It's adaptable by easy modification in maintenance and refurbishment and demountable for easy demolition. It's Meccano for grown-ups. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.